Hello, welcome to a video regarding section 6.1 on differential equations. Uh, we're going to pick this up from the top of page 2, which uh, talks about initial value problems for example 5. So for first order differential equations, um, we can actually find a particular solution instead of a general solution, because the general solutions always have the plus c at the end. But we can actually find the exact equation um, for a differential equation um, if we're given uh, the value of the function at a particular point. So say, for example, we're asked to solve the following differential equation. dy over dx equals 3 to the x times natural log of 3 plus 3 halves times root x. And we're given this initial value. So when y is 0, x is 0, or basically 0 comma 0 is a point on the graph of y. So what we'll do is we'll proceed about this problem like we have done. Uh, dy equals 3 to the x times natural log of 3 plus 3 halves times root x times dx. And then if we um, integrate both sides, we get y equals, now what's the antiderivative of 3x times natural log of 3? The antiderivative of that is just going to be 3 to the x. That's because the derivative of 3 to the x is 3x times natural log of 3 plus, now remember root x is x to the half power. So if I take the antiderivative of that, it's x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves because the derivative of x to the 3 halves is the 3 halves to the front, the 3 halves cancel, drop x front by 1, and of course plus c. And then these 3 halves might have canceling out. So our equation is y equals 3 to the x plus x to the 3 halves plus c. But because we have the initial value, when x is 0, y is 0, so John, I need about um, about five, ten minutes to finish this video. Oh, yeah. Maybe take a break now. So <clears throat> when y is 0, x is 0, so I plug that in, and I can actually solve for c. And c will be negative 1. So the exact equation for this differential equation with the initial value of 0, comma 0, because 0, comma 0 is going to be a point on the graph of y, we have y equals 3 to the x plus x to the 3 halves minus 1. And if you check it out, if you take the derivative of 3 to the x, you do get 3x times natural log of 3. If you take the derivative of x to the 3 halves, you will wind up getting that. And of course, you have the minus 1. Sorry, I'm, I'm just making a video for my students before. Do you have a quick question? Oh, you want, you want to do it today? Do you have an eight period class today? Um, I, I didn't think I could. Yeah, if you can get together. Uh, and um, where are the forms? I don't know where the forms are. Let's shoot. Oh, I think they're right here. Yeah. Why don't you have, have your teacher sign right now? There you go. No problem. Okay. So now what if we cannot come up with an explicit antiderivative? Um, so here we have dy over dx equals root 1 minus e to the 4x. That seems kind of weird, the square of 1 minus e to the 4x. And we do have initial value here. That's negative 5 comma 7. But here's what I'm uh, going to do for you to help you figure this out. Let's use an integral expression in our answer. So here's the deal. We have dy over dx. I can actually safely say my answer is just this. Now 
Now, why can I say that? Fundamental theorem of calculus to the rescue. See, if y equals negative 5, uh, the integral of negative 5 to x of root 1 minus e 4t plus 7, and let's say I take the antiderivative, sorry, let's say I take the derivative of both sides. What's going to happen is that, of course, I get, you know, dy over dx plus 0 on the far right. And remember, this is part of the FTC, right? If you need to derive an antiderivative, you just replace x, or sorry, replace p with x. So it gets us back to actually our original differential equation. Um, remember that the negative 5 was kind of arbitrary. That didn't matter whether whatever we had, but because we had negative five for x here, and because the initial value is seven, because what if I did plug in negative five for x? Oh, I get y equals seven. So I know that um, the original equation would have to be y equals. An uh, the integral from negative 5 to x of root 1 minus e 4t. You can use any letter you want. Oh, and I forgot to put times dt. I need to have that as well. Let me make that a little more neat. I'll do that in red. Um, plus 7. So that's example 6. Okay, what about initial value problems with a discontinuous solution. So what happens is that when the general solution has more than one branch, like for example, we have like a rational function like y equals 1 over x. <coughs> so we have like, you know, you know, two different branches. Of course, we have an asymptote x equals 0. Um, or if we have like tangent of x, which looks like this. You know, we could have some sort of situations there with that. So let's take a look at example seven. So we see a secant and a tangent evolve, and we know that tangent has some asymptotes. Secant also has some asymptotes. So in case you forgot, y equals secant x looks like this. <coughs> x equals negative pi over two x equals pi over 2, when x is 1, y is 0, and it's a periodic function that looks like that. So let's first um, find the um, solution to this equation, and that's our initial value, 0, negative 1. So y is going to equal, now hopefully you remember that if y equals secant x, then the derivative, um, the derivative is secant x times tan x. So in this case, y equals 2 secant x minus x cubed plus c. Antiderivative negative 3x squared, or 3x squared will be x cubed. Um, now if I plug in 0, negative 1, you know, 0 for x and negative 1 for y. C will be negative 2. So our equation will be 2 secant x minus x cubed minus 3. However, we do have to take into consideration our... Um, Our domain because we're including the point 0, negative 1. So, you know, we do have some sort of discontinuity. Remember, when you're not continuous, you're not differentiable either. So, we have to be careful of how we state our final answer. Um, we're clearly interested in this branch because x equals 0. is included. 
and secant x is part of our answer. So, so you kind of have to remember um, some of the natural domains for some of these trig functions, which we can totally review um, at a later time. So that's example seven. Okay, lastly, um, one reason why we need a restrict domain when our solution is a function of separate branches. Let's say we had f of x equals 1 over x, and g of x equals 1 over x plus 5 when x is less than 0, 1 over x when x is greater than 0. And the graphs of those functions are shown below. So one's a piecewise function, one's just a you know, function that we typically see. And remember, 1 over x is the same thing as saying x to negative 1 power. So the antiderivative, sorry, the derivative of that would be negative 1 times x to negative 2 power, or negative 1 over x squared. So it means that for g prime of x, you know, derivative of 5 is 0, so you just get negative 1 over x squared, negative 1 over x squared, when x is less than 0, x squared is 0. So we basically see that um, they're referred to the same thing. Um, so our derivative for both these is negative 1 over x squared, they're both the same thing, and they both pass through the point 1 comma 1. But clearly, the original functions are different. So we definitely have a problem here. Um, and also, if we think about it, if I do the antiderivative of that, y is going to equal x negative 1 plus c. And if I do plug in, you know, or y equals 1 over x plus c. And if I do plug in 1 for both x and y, you know, c is 0. So basically, we both get back to the same original function. So in this place, the only thing that we can really say with confidence is that our answer to the, um, both these differential equations, you know, dy of dx is negative x to negative 2 power, is just going to be y equals 1 over x when x is greater than 0, because um, we don't know how the left branch is going to look. The left branch could be totally different. So that's the only thing we can really say with certainty with a restricted domain is that y equals 1 over x when x is greater than 0. Because um, we don't know how the left side of this graph is going to look. So we'll go ahead and stop there. And we'll um, actually, one last thing I need to say here, too, is that we have discontinuity at x equals 0. And our natural domain for this um, will be negative infinity to 0 union 0 to infinity. And of course, that contains x equals 1. So we have to only focus on the right branch. OK, so I'll go and stop the video there. We'll discuss this in more detail uh, next time we meet. And um, we'll pick this up from page 4 on graphing general solutions for differential equations. Okay, good.